Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to show you how to make a delicious berries and cream crepes. I love this and I thought, you know, this would be a really special breakfast, whether it be for Mother's Day or Easter or a random Tuesday if I'm coming over, but I'm just not saying, but I would appreciate it. I'm not pushing it, but if you want the extra mile to make these for me for breakfast if I was your guest, I might stay there a little bit longer, which might not be what you want, but you get the gist. They're so good. Very easy and simple, and I love them, and I feel like they're just a little bit more special than just say like a stack of pancakes, which hey, nothing wrong with that. But if you make these for a special like weekend brunch or something like that, I think I, I think you'll go down in history because people will love it. The ingredients for the crepes are very basic. They're very simple standard ingredients. Flour, a pinch of salt, a little bit of sugar, eggs, melted butter, whole milk. That's all you need, and a purple spatula. I love making my crepe batter in a blender because you do need this to be really, really smooth. So what I like to do, you got your, you got your vessel here, you got your blender. I'm gonna add all of the liquid first and then I'll give that a whiz just to make sure it's all incorporated before I add the flour. So I've got the eggs, the milk, or as Mia would say, milk, and the butter. And I'm just gonna pop this on and let it whisk until combined. That's good. All right, now we're gonna add in all of the dry ingredients. Like I said, I've got flour, a little pinch of sugar, and a little bit of salt. And I am in the near future gonna share with you how to make some savory crepes. Because those, uh, I really do love sweet crepes, I do. I mean, my crepe cake is one of my favorite things in the entire world, but savory crepe, like a ham, a bechamel, Swiss situation. Oh, so good. I'm gonna pop this on, and now I'm gonna let this go for a good minute or two. I need it to be really soft, really soft, really smooth. Make sure the lid is on. I made that mistake once or twice. And then you just let it go. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna pour the batter back into the bowl that I had my dry ingredients in, just cause it's gonna make it a lot easier when I go to make the crepes. Look at that. Smooth, beautiful batter. Okay, now, very, very important. You wanna make the batter in, with some kind of a blender, immersion blender situation because you need it to get that smooth and I think a blender just works the best, but an immersion blender will do just fine. I would suggest that you put the ingredients in sort of like, um like a large pitcher or like a large mason jar or something like that because it really helps not you know break up any lumps. Equally as important is letting the batter rest. I'm gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes or so and I will show you when then we start making crepes. I mean, that's pretty much it right now. <laughs> All right, first crepe. The first I always feel like, it's kind of like your first pancake. It's always like the most wonky one until you kind of get into a groove. What I've got here is a little bit of like light olive oil or any flavorless oil. I've got a nine inch non-stick pan preheated over about medium heat and the second you put your batter in, you gotta kind of swirl it around so that the batter coats the bottom of the pan. These cook really quickly and really easily really quickly and easily, and you're not looking for them to be like a golden brown color because it's not gonna take that long for them to cook in order to get there, but they'll be a beautiful blonde color and they're just perfect. I love this recipe and I think you will too. You'll know when it's time to flip when you can actually see that the top, you can actually see the top looks dry. It means that the other side is done. I would say, I would suggest you don't do this with your hand. Um, and if it comes off, like if it loosely peels itself off, then you know the bottom is done. Otherwise, you just kind of have to give it a push with the spatula. The first few are always, like I said, wonky, but then you'll get into a groove. And I'm just gonna continue to make a few more. I'm not gonna make all of the batter because the batter actually uh, stays well in the fridge for days. So if you wanna make a batch of the batter, keep it in a mason jar in the fridge for the week and then make them fresh every morning, then you can definitely do that because it lasts so, so well. 
I've got some done. Some I've got a little color on them. The more you make, the more you make, the better you, you the better they come out, really. I've got some done. I'm gonna work on the berry part now because it's gonna cool for a bit. I've got some frozen be mixed berries here. You can use fresh if you want to, but I think when it comes to this amount of mixed berries, the best bang for your buck is to buy them frozen. And I'm gonna add sugar to that, lower the heat a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of zest of a clementine. You could use an orange or you can just leave it out completely or use a little bit of zest of lemon if you want to. And then I'm gonna squeeze in the juice of the clementine as well. I just like the, you know, I like what it adds and what it brings to the table. And so special too for, like I said, a holiday breakfast. Love it. Okay, add that in. And we're just gonna cook these until the berries basically thaw and the sugar melts, it'll come to a boil, and I'll show you what it looks like when it gets there, because it could take a few minutes. But like I said, the best bang for your buck when it comes to using a bunch of mixed berries, say that in this case I need two cups total, everything together, buying them frozen, if you're gonna cook them anyway, is, you know, it, it makes the most sense, otherwise you're gonna have to buy a carton of each one, and you'll only need some of each one. Do you know what I mean? So this just works out really well. That looks amazing. You can also do this, by the way, using only blueberries, which I really like as well, but I like the mixture of all three together because you get like the visual of the big strawberries and then it's just good. In here, I've got a little cornstarch, add a little bit of water to it, make a little slurry. Cornstarch always wants cold liquid. Add a little bit more. And then we're gonna pour this into here and let it cook for a couple of minutes until it's no longer cloudy and it will thicken beautifully. And once it thickens, I'm gonna just take this off the heat and let it cool slightly and then we'll get going, on, it's, already, it's already thickening, and then we'll get going on making the filling, which is really easy but so good. Last thing to work on is the creamy component, which kinda tastes like a no-bake cheesecake which I'm a very big fan of. So it's kind of like you got the crepe, the cheesecake, and the top, oh, so good, so worthy of a special occasion. In Okay, what I've done already is I've taken some heavy cream and I've uh, whisk, whisked it to semi-stiff peaks. So we've got that in there. In here, I've got some softened cream cheese. To the softened cream cheese, I am going to add zest of, well, I bet I had a half a lemon. Not too much, because I don't want it to be too lemony, but it is important. I forgot my vanilla again. Who am I? I keep forgetting my vanilla. Okay, and I'm also gonna add just a small drizzle of lemon juice, and then I'll go get my vanilla. All right, a little lemon juice. Make sure you catch all the seeds. There we go, a couple of teaspoons. Okay, I'm gonna go get my vanilla really quickly. Here we go. And what I have here is some confectioner's sugar. I'm gonna add this in, and then I'm going to take the handheld electric whisk and then whisk it all together to combine. If it's got a little heavy cream on it, who cares? It's all ending up at the same place. It looks awesome. Adding in the whipped cream makes it really light and airy and super delicious. You can make the whipped cream, you know, the cream mixture ahead of time as well. If you want to, just pop it into the fridge. But I really love how just deliciously cloudy it is when it's freshly made. It tastes sublime, really delicious. I'm talking really good. And then here's how you serve, which beyond simple, right? You take your crepe. I'm only gonna make one for now because I will eat it all. You take some of your cream filling, like us all. You roll, like us all. You take some of this gorgeous, really gorgeous and shiny berry sauce, a little sprinkle of confectioner's sugar, and a few sprigs of mint when you go to serve it because it's gotta be extra special, you know what I mean? 
you take your bite, trying to get a little bit of everything together. I wanted to show you the inside, but it's kind of hard to do that when the crepe, here, you can see it in here. See that? Holds together beautifully. That's like the most perfect bite in the entire world. That was one of the most delicious. Oh my word. It's like a cloud topped with sweet goodness. Oh, it's so beyond delicious. Look at that bite. Now I know you're jealous of this. Look at that. Go to laurainthekitchen.com. I will have the written recipe ready for you. Please make this for Mother's Day breakfast, brunch, Easter brunch, whatever. You can make the crepes a couple days before. You can make the batter way ahead in advance. The cream filling the night before. Just whip up a fresh batch of sauce in the morning. Combine everything together. Big platter, really abundant, and you will be in business. Hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.